Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Good. Happy to be here. It's good to see you. Seems like it's been days. Yeah. It has been. We've got the nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am great, Mark. Good to be here. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm on the up and up. Doing better. How about you? Good. I'm. I'm. Look, I'm still recovering from my mountain biking accident, which oh. I, you know, uh, I'm still blaming Tate for. We've got the Zen Master. <laughs> breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And last but not least. You know him. You love him. The brain. The professor. Your flight school Sherpa. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you post our first virtual boot camp? Mark, I'm good. But that, that thing that you just said just really cracked me up, which is you're still recovering from your mountain biking accident. It sounds like you went over the cliff. And like... I did emotionally. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, like you went over the handlebars though, right? Let's not talk about it. Okay. All right. No, let's just skip that part. Are you, uh, are you, are you, uh, okay. Forget it. We'll just move on. Let, let's talk about virtual bootcamp. How, how, would, how do you think virtual, your first virtual bootcamp went? Eric uh, Peterson, how, how, Scott, how we're skipping you because you're already going off the rails. Eric okay. Peterson. All right. We'll get, we'll come back. Yeah. Listen, I, I think that uh, virtual boot camp was a success. I mean, it went much better than I honestly expected it to go. Um, I thought for sure um, something would happen with the technology or the schedule or any number of things, right? But uh, overall, everything went really well. Um, and I think the people that attended were overall very happy with what we provided. So I'm happy. No, I, I agree. Scott Boston, what was your take? Uh, I, I thought it was great. Um, I, I thought the content as usual was, was really great. And uh, I pulled some new nuggets away, right? How many boot camps have I been to? So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, the, the thing I missed the most was the networking, the actual seeing people, right? Like we just, I think we all just miss people right now. And uh, that a little bit difficult to uh, to deal with, but, and, and to be able to make connections like we so often do at these events. But, um, you know, uh, there was still some of that coming through, which I thought was great. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like that, that human connection, being right. in the room with somebody. But, as, you know, given that, that barrier, I, I still think like it it was nice to just see everybody connect, even grill the geeks. Like, you know, people are like, I want to be friends with the Forbes and, and Taria yeah. and Landon, you know, and Jeff Detmer. Like they're like, these guys are great. So like we were able to showcase our community and, and even the young guns, you know, like yeah. who doesn't want to hang out and do deals with Michaela or Roy or Kevin, you know what I mean? Um, it was, it was really awesome. How about, how about you, Mimi? What was your take? Yeah, well, I care about so many of these people and their businesses. I love to see everybody and give them hugs, you know, so I really did miss that part. Um, but the good part was I was shocked. There were like over a hundred people there, you know, on Zoom. You would just like page through all the people. It was just, uh, there'd be another page and another page. So I was so uh, impressed with the, um, how involved everybody was and the questions that we would start to get. That was great, the interaction. Yeah. Zen Master, how, how was your experience? I thought it was awesome. I think that uh, there was a lot m more engagement with the chat questions. I think people weren't afraid of being in the front row and having you uh, get right up there with the microphone. Um, that could be a little nerve wracking to some people. They tend to shy to the back of the room. Now everybody got a front row seat. I thought it was amazing. You know, everybody's uh, got the best view in the house. 
Yeah, I know. You know what? And it's so funny you mention that because being a self-absorbed narcissist like I am, I don't even think about that <laughs> at live boot camp. Like I'm just doing my own thing, literally with no empathy for the attendees and what it's like to have a mic shoved in their face. Like, <laughs> yeah. and now what do you do in this part of the process? So I think, you know, this forces me to think about other people in a way that I've never had to, which is great. So it's a kinder, gentler boot camp, virtually. But the least kind and the least gentle of all of us is Scott Todd. Scott, the with least. your big bat, with your big mini bat, your big intimidating bat, how is your virtual boot camp? I th like. I thought the boot camp was good, right? You know, it was um, it was different. Um, you know, no normally we're accustomed to seeing people. We're accustomed to like being there in the room. People can walk up and ask us questions, and that helps to solidify some of the content that that uh, that they might be missing or something. But at the end of the day, I think it was pretty good, right? Like I uh, I didn't see any technical problems other than some Macintosh that you were operating that didn't have a microphone on or something. <laughs> Like yeah. you talked for two minutes by yourself. Like, that, I don't that, know. That, it, didn't happen yeah. to, it did not happen on a surface is all I got to say, bro. That was a, by the way, you can blame Matt Forbes and his scarlet USB, you know, thing. I actually have to press a button. That's a Matt Forbes thing. That is not a Mac thing. Personal oh. accountability. Okay, fine. It's always my fault, but <laughs> it's true. You know, I, yeah. Right. Extreme, extreme ownership. I'll take extreme ownership of it. Okay. But if Matt Forbes way. is listening. It's a Matt Forbes. No, I don't think it's a Matt Forbes issue. Source. No, issue. no. So don't you just I think it was really good. Mark? What's that? Don't you just leave it on? Yeah, but it turns off because like, you know, the computer will go to sleep and all that. I don't, I don't even want to tell you what happens technically because then it just feeds Scott Todd and his his surface conspiracy what you theory. what you need apparently is one like i have that does you know when the computer goes to sleep the thing just keeps operating man anyways okay. i thought it went really well and um for our first one you know the the surveys we've got a lot to improve on for october virtually because we're all about kaizen so for those of you that left us feedback thank you so much we definitively know how to improve and uh the next one will be even better but we do have a really interesting topic that came out of boot camp so eric peterson what is today's topic well a, a question that was asked during boot camp was how many offers do the coaches send out um so today we're gonna talk about how many offers we send out and then along with that um what are we doing about the, the response rate? Is it what we always talk about, that one to 3%, or is it different today? Yeah, so let's start with you. How many offers are you currently sending out and what is your response rate as of today? Yeah, so um, we send probably right around 1,000 offers a month um, to multiple counties. Um, our mailing, uh, Typically, we're not um, just mailing one county each month or each week. We tend to take the counties we work in and they kind of live in the, the queue of offers to go out. And uh, throughout the month, we'll hit all those different um, places that uh, we like to buy property. Um, response rate currently, and I would say probably for the past... Um, three to four months maybe has been a little nor uh, a little lower than than typical uh, in our business um, I think my interpretation anyways is that people I'm not concerned about people receiving too many offers but I I, I believe what's going on is that the people receiving my mail um, they, don't, they might not be in a position today where they need money. Um, and that could be due to what's going on in the economy, um, you know, the unemployment and the extra funds and, and those things. I mean, 
possibly that could be what's going on. Um, there could be other things happening as well, but I just feel like um, maybe at, at this point in time, they're, the people receiving these offers are a little feeling a little better financially where they don't need to make a sale of, you know, a couple thousand dollars and, and have that extra cash. However, if that is the case, I do believe that is going to change soon. Um, as time goes on, um, you know, the government changes what they're doing. Um, that may be reflected in, in what's happening with our offer letters, but that's just kind of my own personal thought on it. So, yeah. Uh, Scott Bossman, how about you? How many offers and what's your response rate right now? You're on, you're on mute. There you go. Are you still on mute? Can I unmute you? There you go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, we're doing around a thousand a month as well. Uh, I would say we're seeing the same trend. Uh, response rate is less. Um, however, we're not buying less property. We've, we've done a couple bulk deals uh, this summer where we've bought multiple properties from uh, one, one seller, multiple properties from another seller. Um, those opportunities are still there. Uh, for sure. It only takes one uh, in, you know, a thousand mailings uh, to, to be able to purchase 20, 30 properties. Um, so our, our buy rate is not down. And in fact, our buy rate is up a little bit. Uh, and then we have taken advantage of some wholesale deals as well, because for, you know, the last three or four months in a couple different areas, land's been flying off the shelves and we're trying to replenish that right away. And there's a lot of wholesale deals going on right now. Um, so I think that's, uh, you know, uh, as far as that goes, I, I would, I would agree, uh, response rate on mailings is down, but our ability to purchase property is actually, uh, has been up here the last couple months. Um, and I kind of agree with Eric. I, I don't know if the people getting the mailers, you know, maybe, maybe they're realizing that, Hey, um, uh, my land in this economy right now with, you know, the volatility of the stock market, that type of thing, maybe this is more of an investment for me and maybe I should hold on to it a little bit longer, something like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mimi Schmidt, how about you? I send out about 800 mailers a month, but I buy, like I'm in five counties, one of which I wholesale in. I've got a, a, uh, a big deal working in another county. So I will say though, so I've got wholesale deals, I got bulk deals, I got the mailing going out. Um, I don't mail to a county more than once a month. Uh, sometimes it's like a subdivision even. So uh, I do look, I track the response rate and look before I send it out to watch my pricing. And I am watching like I've been out on land moto a bunch the last couple of days, making sure that my pricing is um, appropriate because it's been going up so quick. I think you really got to pay attention to the pricing right now just because things are changing so quickly. So then my response rate stays really good around that 5% because I'm watching the pricing. See, there you go. Eric Peterson can take a page out of the pricing matrix book of uh, the Terrace Hunter over there. Um, the Zen Master, how about you? <laughs> well, can I point out a little gem that was thrown out earlier that may have gone over everybody's head or whatnot? I'm not sure, but Scott, when you talked about the surface, it goes to sleep and it still works. That sounds just like our land business. <laughs> Two efficient models side by side. Right? Do we not go to sleep and our land business still works? The surface goes to sleep and yet it still functions. Such a, a good parallel there. I just didn't know if anybody caught that. I, I think there's point. one more thing to append to that though. Unlike the land business, the, you know, the surface, <laughs> the land business doesn't get viruses. Yeah, I don't get viruses either. My so, surface doesn't get viruses. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I, I certainly remember having to go back to the Microsoft store and getting a new computer. Well, I, for that, my, for my son, what were you, what, that, what that websites were you visiting? To the podcast and listens to Scott Todd, Uncle hey, Scott. No, not me, not on my computer. Okay. Well, we can at least all agree that if we go to sleep, the land business works. So that's, that's sort of the, the higher reference there. I don't want to cause any, you know, will be for me to cause any, you know, uh, arguments in the group. Yeah. I don't want to stir the pot. I just thought I'd point that out. You know, I, I, you know what? My son does this all the time. He's like, to be honest. And then whatever he's going to say, I know. Or he's like, I don't mean to offend you. Like, whatever he's going to say the next is, is offensive. And so you stir the pot, and then you're like, but I don't mean to stir the pot. But yeah, you do. 
Hey, Mark, no offense. So, <laughs> yeah, ex no, exactly. So whatever's going to come out next <laughs> is offensive. <laughs> like, well, it could be taken as offensive. It doesn't mean it's going to be offensive. Well, I'm not going to be offended by it, but anyone else listening to this will be like, oh, yeah, that's offensive. <laughs> Why do you say no offense? Well, they might just go... Or well, they might just go by a surface. Okay, but you're not even answering the question, Mike. <laughs> okay, how so, many offers, well, <laughs> and what's your response rate? We sent about 800 out across several counties, and you know, it. I can attest to the same story that the you know that the or overall response rate may be going down, but I'm always uncovering bulk deals, and I think, uh, you know, so that. You know, that's important to to realize, you know, you're always going to like Scott uh, Bossman said that one mailer could unlock 10, 20 deals just like that, you know. Um, so and there is land all over the place right now. But that's not the question. The question you're asking is uh, so about 800, sometimes close to a thousand. And, uh, you know, there may be some months we buy uh, four or five properties. Some months we might buy 20, uh, uh, you know, so I think it averages out over time. It, you know, we uncover those bulk deals. So. I'm not worried about it. I think that might have been the origin of the question. Is like, are we concerned that maybe that the response rate is a little lower than normal? And so the answer would be no. Uh, I'm not concerned. I don't think, based on the answers so far, anybody else has either. All right, Scott Todd. How about you? Um, on on average, we we typically hit. Um, and it varies, but we'll typically hit anywhere from a thousand to like sixteen hundred offer letters, and it it just depends. One of the one of the big things that it depends on is my my inventory, right? Like when I'm when I'm uh, doing well, or if we have stuff in the pipeline, it might just be that thousand. And when things like when the inventory is getting low, like our inventory right now is like really low, then you know we're we're upping it. So like the month of August, we'll actually hit uh probably at like two thousand now the response rate um i think that the response rate is down like everybody said but i think what's happening is as everybody said is that we're uncovering like larger deals okay so like we're grabbing bulk deals um and so essentially there's no lack of deal flow i think that the problem comes in is that um you just got to be hustling a little bit on the on the buy side and you know on the sales side it's like it's the easy button over there so on this on the selling or on the buying side you gotta hustle a little bit more normally it's like the other way around right like normally it's the sales side is a little bit of the hustle where the buy side is the the easy stuff so it's just re kind of rebalancing the way that we're thinking about things um and the way that we're approaching things and how often we're following up with people too like when they raise their hand and go hey i'm interested or okay, let me let me talk to so and so. Well, now we're following back up with them. Where before we were just like, come back to us when you're ready. Now we're like, hey, what what did you decide? What what's the deal here? And I think that people are saying kind of what Eric said, which is, you know, they're not saying this, but there's a lot of money flowing. There's a lot of money flowing in the economy right now. You know, there's people that are definitely unemployed, but there are a lot of like government funds flowing. And so people are a little bit more comfortable today. And then they're like, well, maybe I'll see what happens. Maybe I'll see, uh, maybe I need this in the future. I don't know. So the, the secret though, the secret is this consistency, just keep hitting the mailboxes because three months from now, everybody that you mail to may call, call you back and go, let's do it today. I need the money today. How fat? We don't know. It will turn. When? Who knows? Yeah, it's it's so true. And the COVID economy is is weird. Um, but in every every market cycle, there's always that point where it's easy to buy, it's harder to sell. Or it's, you know, really hard to buy, but super easy to sell, which I think we're seeing kind of now. And then there's nice equilibrium where it's easy to buy, easy to sell. You just have to adapt. Now, what's nice about our niche is that we can still always buy because we're buying right. Where if you look at multifamily, they can go a couple years, the market's too hot, they can't buy anything. The cap rates don't make sense. So we're really lucky to be in, in this niche, even in uh, a weird economy, um, in a weird market that seems to be heating up the way it is, you know, 
whether we buy it at 25 cents a dollar, 30 cents on the dollar, 35 cents on the dollar, we're still locking in big, big profits. And we're not having to outlay this huge amount of capital, go to private money, you know, all these other headache type of things that, that the other real estate niches have to go through right now. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be a fund sitting on $20 million and I can't buy anything unless it's at a two or three cap. Like, can you imagine going to your investors like, well, the COVID economy is too hot. I couldn't buy anything. That's when you get in trouble. You over leverage, you overpay. That's a whole other podcast. Anyways, I thought this was a really good topic. And Eric, I'm really glad you brought it up. So we're going to go back to Eric, go boomerang back to Eric and ask him for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. Uh, today, I have an app to talk about. Uh, you can find it at the today.app. And it's, you know, we've talked about a number of different apps that kind of fall into this category. Um, it's kind of about building habits and, you know, accomplishing your tasks and, and things of that nature. But I came across this one uh, last week. I, I actually don't use it, but um, I did kind of, it caught my eye and I thought it could be helpful for, for certain people. Um, you know, one thing we talk about in the mastermind and, and with coaching students from time to time is, is theming your days and, um, you know, taking certain days of the week and uh, accomplishing a certain part of the business that day. So for example, you know, maybe uh, Tuesday is, is marketing day and you're going to make sure you've got all your new properties out on the market, all the places you want them posted. And, and that's your number one priority. Well, I could see like theming your week and, and kind of building it into this app and, and using it to help you kind of stay on track and, and not get distracted. So I thought I'd throw it out there and uh, there you go. Well, I've got, I've got a really good book that would go along with this app. But before I give that book tip out, I have to like remind the listeners of who our sponsor is today because they pay big money to be on this podcast and we have to give them their due. It's flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing. Start building your passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents. And go up there with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. He'll take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently. Learn more. Get on a call with a dude buddy, Nightcap OG Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master Mike Zeno thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. So Eric, my book that I would recommend to go with wait, this app. Wait, do we save it for next week? So our listeners come back to hear the follow-up tip? Mm. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I think this is a good combo though. Okay. There's, well, like there's, short, there's no shortage of tips. Hey. All right. Wait a minute. If, if you give it next week, not that they have to follow up and listen again, we get another download. But Boy, you guys but are hungry for those metrics. Then Mimi wouldn't have to worry about another one, another tip of the mm -hmm. week. You oh. know, so, but, but hang on, win-win. That, win. that win, Mimi win. love is really, really overwhelming. Look, you know right. what? She has a full week to do <laughs> in-depth analysis. It's not should like... Wait, oh, I, I have another democracy. proposal. Wait, Eric's got one. Okay. So I can't think of a time where Tate Litchfield <gasps> ever gave a tip of the week. I have to agree and with I, you. I know he's not here today. <laughs> so he's not going to be very happy about this. But is it true? Is, has he I never think given you're a tip right. of the week? I think you're right. I think he skirted the whole thing, man. Oh, tip of the week. Uh. Is it and, possible you know, that he hasn't done it? I think we need to blindside him next week. He, he would. He told. would have to. He would have to prove that he did do it. It has been two years. I've been doing it. Two, two years and three. See? Months. Wow, that's that is a oh, long time. Two years. Wow. Two years. So then you better keep. 
So, Mark, then you better keep it as a backup to what you're about All to right. say. You know what? In case Tate doesn't have a tip, yeah. Look, I'm. You know what? I'm. I'm not gonna tease the listeners and be like, well, you know, download next week's uh, roundtable so you can get the the tip of the week. It is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I know I've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I really like that book. It would be a really nice compliment to Eric's tip of the week of building habits because um, it can really move the needle in your life. So with that, I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way we're going to motivate Mimi to continue doing tips of the week is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course as well as the latest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Please do it. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate your support. You know what you could also do? Forward this to a friend that needs to make some more money. Get out of their dead-end job. Get some passive income. Get out of social economic dependency. Be a giver. Do that. All right. Are we ready to do this? Are we good? One, two, three. Let's let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Jeez, okay. Mike. By the way, Scott Boston, how about how about Natalie Mino with the the boot camp magic? How many how many deals did we close? Uh, so we had to be close mm. to. I mean, we were right around ten. I think. I, I think you and I predicted eleven. Yeah. Um, but the Swansons had multiple deals over the weekend. Chad and Haley, they're in flight school right now. They had two or three over the weekend. The Minos had one, and a bunch of uh, Don Presa had a couple. So I th- I think we probably hit eleven. I bet we hit eleven. That man, I'm telling you that that magic is it's magical. We should yeah. do boot camp freaking every and, weekend. Hey, just but to get but more deals. Uh, for for Natalie Mino, it was kind of the the uh, I, I think it happened right at the the cessation of boot camp. So it was like a three day build up, and then she got that sale, which was pretty cool. That's really cool. Wow. We gotta add um, that to the survey. Did you sell it? Yeah, we yeah. should add that to the survey. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't fill out the survey, can you go to back to your email and fill it out, please? Um, it really helps us. And leave a review on Facebook. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash reviews. Um, let us maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, this would be hard. Maybe this is me being mean. I don't know. But like, <laughs> we'll trade you the surveys for the slides. Okay, so I did put that in my e- my first email as a joke, like do this and then you'll get that. But then I thought that's so Zeno ish to like have conditions, <laughs> you know. So Zeno ask. I don't think that's it's fair. like conditions. this is friendship. You were, weren't you supposed so to say no offense, but this is no so- no offense, <laughs> but I don't like Kibby. No offense. They don't make fun of you. They don't like you. That's how we judge the people at the fire station. They don't make fun of you. They don't like you. So keep it coming. Oh. You know, what, what, what is, is the, thing, uh, what's the What's the old saying in the South? Uh, bless her heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know? yeah. That's, yeah oh, like bl- that. oh, bless her heart. Yeah, that's like, you know, you're getting, you know, destroyed. She can't help it. Bless her heart. Bless <laughs> her heart. <laughs> Eric, is that is that a thing? It's like, Here's an insult for you. Bless your heart. It can be. It certainly can be. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like uh, yeah. You're listening to that album again. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only music you like. Bless your it's heart. It's the only music. Yeah. It's it's like such a polite dig. Um, although I I do like the southern accent. Um. I really do like anything that like it all sounds like very sweet and charming even if it's like rude it's like oh, that was such a nice insult compared to like the boston accent which is like an ice pick to your eye like ow <laughs> you know you know my no boston, offense no offense but my, you, know, <laughs> you know boston has been uh rated the most unfriendly city really 
Why is that's that? That's how I know I'm back in Boston when I come from the uh, trips. I hear the honking of the horns. You don't hear that anywhere else. Yeah, Mike, why, why we is say Boston we love so you. friendly? I don't know. Well, if you had to live, if you had to live in in like a frozen tundra, <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, we're polite here in Wisconsin. We yeah, there is no honking of horns here in Wisconsin. Oh, the Wisconsin's anywhere. The Wisconsinites, the Minnesotans are friendly. Because the horn froze off and fell off. That's why there's no honking. Because <laughs> it's too dang cold there. At least yeah. the horns still work in Boston. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You, it, Wisconsin, man, they were they weren't about like the, the horns are clogged with cheese. No offense. Uh, we live longer up here. The, the, Look, the weather up here builds character and live long and prosper. Long, long journey. I bet you could do that. Ooh, I can yeah. do that. Boston. Uh, I, anyway. I don't. I don't mean to stir the do pot. But you, you can get me to live in Wisconsin for a billion dollars. Just between two firms. In the summer, I could. With the mosquitoes? No, I pass. I we don't have was, we, we hardly have any mosquitoes where I live. I don't know. It's the craziest thing. Like I grew up in South really? Dakota, the mosquitoes are horrendous. This little pocket in Wisconsin, hardly any mosquitoes. Come on All over. Right. It's seventy-eight today, Mark. It's gorgeous. That's it's seventy-eight. Not, that's, just, that's a it's, winter it's day in here. Florida. It's a winter. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, uh, by the way, how how sweet are Eric and Mimi? Never stirring the pot. Never. We we have to like you know, get them to like. I don't know. I got to start a box of wine or something for suggesting take take on the deal of the week or the tip of the week. That yeah. was yeah. You know, that, that was, was Eric generous. Stir the pot. He that was. I think that was just that was just being generous of of Mimi's. You know, plight of every week, for years, having it be put on the spot. With the tip of the week, but in in fairness to the rest of us, her tips of the week have been so good, like it's hard to follow. You know what I mean? So it is a compliment. It's not like she remembers uh, two years, three months, two weeks, one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But who's who's counting? Who's keeping track? Mark, you know what my favorite part of boot camp was. Is when is when I basically helped Tate market lots and told them that like if you buy lots and then you go to Vegas, you get to have lunch with them too. <laughs> like that was my Man. favorite part of boot camp. That, that was so funny. Yeah, you know, help he, you with he your email. immediately shot back at you too. <laughs> he did, he did. But but in fairness, he's the one that started this, right? That's right. He started. He started it. For yeah. Sure. He started. Yeah, but it was it was like it was great seeing you know, our community, even virtually. Like that, it's still better than nothing, I, I think. And so for us, I think the challenge is, well, how do we create that networking component virtually? Because technically speaking, it's very difficult to do, but there are some things I think we can do and uh, we're gonna work on it for sure. Um, we'll get real geeky with it. So it's good. But it was really great hanging out with all of you uh, uh, this past weekend and, you know, for me, listening to the, the modules and, um, you know, everyone was involved. It, it was great. And I think that it's really nice because then no one gets just sick of my voice because we, we, we blend in all the voices. Um, cause there's always a point in, in boot camp. I just get sick of myself, you know, I know Mike's like, yeah, I got real, I got real stuff like 10, 10 a.m. Friday. I had enough of you, Mark. No offense. I was like, is he still going to keep presenting? No offense. <laughs> I don't mean to stir the pot, but it was hard to listen to. Uh, if you okay. want a good dose of the New England accent, you got to watch Nosferatu. Nosferatu? N O S for. Uh, A2. You ever seen that? It's a no. great TV show. Stephen King's son maybe wrote it? I'm not sure. Okay, cool. Based well, in Haverhill. Um, based oh. in Haverhill. All right. Well, on that note, um, everybody have a great rest of your day and um, see everybody soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark.